Hi guys, we've got uh, another PowerPoint here, even though Yahweh said last night, it was the last. <laughs> it's until he went to his computer today and found out, <sighs> started measuring again, still. All right, China pyramids, all point to the Lord. White pyramid, north 34 degrees, 23 minutes, 0.868 seconds. By east, 108 degrees, 42 minutes, 0 0.740 seconds is 31.2 miles to the largest pyramid in China. So we, we were focusing on the white pyramid, but it's a larger pyramid. So it's 31.2 miles to the larger pyramid. Now that uh, pyramid, the larger one, is north 34 degrees, 22.883 by east 109, 15 minutes, 0 0.231 seconds. And it is, it measures 4,461 miles back to the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt. So that's back to the Great Pyramid at Giza. And that number 4461 is the word rabbi. The coordinates, of course, of the Great Pyramid are north 29 degrees 58.749 by east 31 degrees 08.059. Now, the three 31.2 miles between the two pyramids in China, of course, is 312, and that is the English to Matra for Brian Leonard, Go Lightly, Marshall. Brian 44, Leonard 69, Marshall 115, and Sorry, they're likely 115 and Marshall 84, all adding up to 312. And that, of course, is a reference to the Revelation 312, <coughs> which says, Jesus speaking through the Archangel Michael, given to John on the Isle of Patmos, I'll have a new name. Here is the pyramid in question, the larger pyramid. Now, moving along to the diagonal, uh, Yahweh says it's within a few feet of being accurate, considering that the entire structure is covered with soil and trees planted in a pathetic attempt by the Chinese government to cover the Chinese pyramids to avoid prying eyes of European traders in the early 1900s era. During the World War II era, American aircraft took photographs and the secret was out. Then the locals retold ancient stories that they were built by huge bearded blue-eyed white men. So these huge bearded blue-eyed white men are similar in description as told by the Aztec and Mayan people recalling huge blue-eyed bearded white men who came from the east and built the pyramids of Mesoamerica. They were led by Kukulkan, a tall white man with silver hair, long beard and blue eyes. Kukulkan had a human form, a man standing about six feet tall with long white hair, but most interestingly, he was a male, Caucasian man with white skin. We find writing from the Mayans and sculptures of what is thought to be Kukulkan, and they depict a very European-looking figure, totally different from how the Mayans looked. Mayans were dark-skinned, Latin-looking people. They were normally not very tall and had brown eyes, no beard or silver hair. Kukulkan was a complete contrast. Having white or silver hair, white skin, blue eyes, and he was tall. Scientists and scholars alike have all wondered why this could have been the case. Why would a civilization have a divine figure, a god that looked nothing like themselves? Why would they look like people found in Western civilization? The Chinese likewise were normally not very tall and had brown eyes, no beard or silver hair. These pyramid builders were a complete contrast and like Kukulkan, having white or silver hair, white skin, blue eyes and also tall so disturbed the Chinese government. They did not want the peasants to see Europeans as gods who built these ancient structures. No, they were angels that built the ancient structures. Now we must measure with Magellan satellite software, not using online Google Earth. All Google Earth measurements are out when measuring distances longer than a few kilometers. So don't bother. The Jews have everything covered, but not 
software 10 years old installed on, on Yars, many computers. And this is the only way he can now measure the Earth. They started altering Google Earth once uh, they saw that he was using it. So let's look at the results. And if you remember, uh, Joel did a couple of uploads, Google Earth deception, where he himself measured before and after the alterations. So here it is, uh, the White Pyramid. You've got a map length, ground length of 39.22 miles using Google Earth. And then it's measured again using the Magellan satellite software that Yas been using since 1997 and is 100% accurate. And there it is, it's 31.2 miles. So it's out by 8.02 miles at 39.22 miles using Google Earth. Here it is again, now this time measuring from the uh, China largest pyramid over to the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt, over to Giza. And you can see using Google Earth, the ground length is 4470.92 miles. And yet using the much more accurate Magellan software, it's 4461.9. So there you have the 4461 and 4462 miles is Greek rabbi or raboni, meaning Lord. From John 20, 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. This appearance to Mary is not Mary Magdalene, as all Bibles suggest. It was his mother, Mary, and it was the appearance was in the garden called Gethsemane. At first she did not recognise him, thinking it was the gardener. And now Yah's conception within his mother Daphne Golightly was on Gardner's Road, Rosebury. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And the Garden of Gethsemane, of course, is where Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, prayed, also where Mary prayed. And as said, the Holy Spirit came, just as Gabriel said it would. And both women conceived in the garden. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, where? Gethsemane. Now the next slide is where the conception in this lifetime took place on April 6, 1943. And the number, of course, was 433 Gardner's Road. Yah's rebirth date of January 11, 1944. His mother was surprised as the doctor told her that he was going to be born on November 11th, 1943. But as far as she knew, it was a gestation of 11 months because she calculated from her sexual intercourse with her husband and uh, that was in February of 1943. And this was a woman who remembered numbers. Mm, I mean, she counted good. everything she was... It's worse than that. Yes. <laughs> and this next slide is um, Google Earth looking at 433 Gardens Road, Rosebury, Sydney. How uh, fitting is a medical centre. Now the school that Yah first attended was on Gardner's Road, Rosebury. Also, it was there that he became aware Mary was with him. She guided him to avoid vaccinations and warned him of plans of attacks by older boys. And Yah learned very quickly to dispatch them in a lightning response, which to this day he recalls as being powered by an angelic force that would be the angel of night, of Judah. He was particularly appalled by the number of homosexual abuses against gentle, smaller boys, and he was their defender. That's why he uh, has no tolerance for homosexuals. Apart from that, it's perversion. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's right. The distance from Yah's conception home to his classroom on Gardner's Road is a distance of 1068 feet. In Greek, this number, 1068 Eight is Gethsemane, the garden where his mother Mary conceived, was conceived within Anna, his grandmother. It is therefore obvious that Daphne also conceived on Gardner's Road at number 433, and that number in Hebrew is God. Here's the distance between the two locations, Gardner's Road. 
No, just reiterating about having to use Magellan satellite software since the Jews have altered Google Earth. Let's go back to look at the results. The largest pyramid in China to the Great Pyramid, the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt. There's a the distance there using Magellan 4471.0 miles. This is the largest pyramid in China. In the world. In the world, yes. Mm -hmm. So measuring from the largest pyramid to where we are today in Tugum, Queensland, Australia, it measures 4,444.4 nautical miles. Using Google Earth, however, it measures 4,339.26 nautical miles, a distance of 105 difference, rounded, and 105 is eagle or angel. Now from the North Pole to China's largest pyramid measures 3,843 miles, and in Hebrew that is whiteness of brick white. Kilometers it's 6183, and that number means heaven. What we can do is measure the diagonal and gain some idea of what the height would be based on the same shape of the pyramid to the Lord in the midst of Egypt. As close as he could assume the diagonal is approximately 1,600 metres, 1,600 to 1,605 feet, sorry, not metres. Based on that, the height computed with the pi face angle, so the face angle is 51 point. Mm, of the Great Pyramid. Yeah, yeah of, of the Great Pyramid. Um, <clears throat> It would be just under 8,674 inches, which of course is the Hebrew Concordance word total in the KJV 1611 Bible. Now a small leap of logic, we know it has to be 8674, it's all about God, and that is the Hebrew word total. So calculating the height based on 8674 pyramid inches, this then becomes 722.8333 pyramid feet. We calculate as follows, 8674 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 12 equals feet equals 1135.4239, which is 1605.7319 pyramid feet, or a base perimeter of 4541. 0.6956 pyramid feet. The second one there is the diagonal. The 1605, yeah. oh right, okay. Oh, the first one you see, the no, side, sorry. okay, no, 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 I've got it, I'm like, wait, oh, that doesn't compute. Okay, 1135 is guni, meaning woman or wife, and come into being. So we're talking about conception. Mm -hmm. 1605 Greek is ekpleso, strike with astonishment. There it is there. Now since the base of the altar to the Lord, so this is back over at Giza, is 100 years or 36,524.24 pyramid inches equals days, and time was set by the moon lunation zero on December 18th, 1922, we do the same with the huge base of the China Pyramid. So 13,625.0868 is 13,625 days. Starting at December 18th, then count through to 13,625 days results in the 4th of April, 1960. So, the 6th, sorry, it's not the 4th of April, we've got the 6th of April, I'm looking at the 4 there. <clears throat> it's the 6th of April in 1960. So from this date to Yah's 69th rebirth date is 52.76 years, and that word is Greek wine fat found in Mark 12, verse 1, reading, Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine fat, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. 
When the season came, he sent slaves to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another. And that one they killed. And so it was with many others. Some they beat and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. So to explain the parable to you, this was Jesus speaking, Yahweh, as Jesus. Of course, he was walking the disciples at the time through a little history lesson and explaining what had come to pass, what will be at that time, and what would come at this time now. So a man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dig a pit for the wine fat and built a watchtower and then leased it to tenants and went into another country. So we're talking about the earth here. And then when the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them and share the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. So we're leading up to the crucifixion here because we're actually talking about the prophets that were raised up of Judah that God sent to Israel, who were the husbandmen of the, the priests. And again, he sent another slave to them, and they beat and they insulted, and over and over and over. So they're talking about the prophets that were sent, that they killed until he says I'll send my son and of course this is as Jesus Yahweh himself he goes as the son called Jesus they will respect him of course they crucified him this is the heir come let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours so all of you understand that this earth has been in the grip of the evil priests you all know that now so they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. That was the crucifixion. So now, moving forward in time, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. So what then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come, hello, and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. This is why the Jews who call themselves Jews, who are the evil priests, and have been killing not only the prophets, but everybody else that gets in their way, to seize and keep the inheritance that they know belongs to God. He comes to destroy them. So it's not a happy. There is no forgiveness for them. And if you're offended by that, it's too late. Right, now moving away from the PowerPoint and over to Revelation 17, 11, because this is where Benedict and Francis come in. This is what's occurring now. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So the beast, and we're talking about the system, the system that was, which is the Catholic Church, and of course the Pope being the leader of the Catholic Church, as it was. Even he that was and is not. So that's the withdrawing of <laughs> Benedict. He withdraws into, a into retirement. Even he is the eighth and is of the seven. So he's the only one that is of the seven. Francis is not of the seven. Benedict is of the seven and is the only one that remains alive. It's not the spirit of John Paul II entering in to Francis as the Christian world has speculated about. It's about a pope that remains alive. He goes into retirement 
but he is the eighth. Well, he's the eighth because the Christ has made him the eighth. And he goeth into perdition. Perdition means destruction, loss. And that's exactly what Benedict felt like as he withdrew. He had lost his health and he had lost his heart over the condition of the church. Benedict is an innocent lamb and learning of the things that he did about the immorality that had been happening in the church, plus all of the uh, affairs to do with the papers that were taken by the butler and uh, the, uh, what the Vatican was up to, all, all of those things. He'd fallen in his uh, travels to Mexico the previous year, broken his wrist, he was arthritic, obviously kidney problems, why, that's why he was so very, very dark under the eyes. So he was suffering loss and destruction. Loss of what? And destruction of what? His health and his heart and his spirit. And so he withdraws. And, and for that, anybody who is experiencing those things, that is their perdition. So the Christ comes along, begins communicating from the 11th of March, and the first thing he does is uh, cures him. How? By telling him what to do. As a matter of fact, what did you say to him if I told you to uh, dip into the river the Jordan for the tigers? Yes. Mm. Would you do it? Would you? Mm. Mm. I said, if you wanted to see a, uh, a miracle, you asked me if I'd do miracles. I said, mm. yeah, what do you want? I said, how about we get Bishop George to go in the next room like a ghost of people or an angel or something? What did I do? Or how about I just hear you? Mm. That's what he wanted. So we'll yes. get healed. From that moment, now he started to get healed. Right. Yeah. I said, now you've got to do this to maintain it, right? That's right. So he, he responded immediately. His staff uh, began uh, feeding him bicarb soda and all kinds of things. The, the simple protocols that are miracles to people who are feeling like they're in perdition through loss of health. And that's the crime that these things have been held back. So that's what that's why Benedict has to come back. He is the eighth. So Francis has a very short time. He is the Antichrist because he has denied Christ has come in the flesh. He was given all of the evidence in the meeting that he had with Benedict on March the 23rd. That's what the white envelope that was given over to him. It wasn't filmed by the media, but it was recorded photographically uh, by Father Giuseppe and Archbishop George who were at the meeting. So that's why we know that Benedict is okay. We made him a promise and, and that's what we're uh, upholding. And he comes back as the eighth. And the church is no longer the beast because it introduces under the headship of Benedict Vatican III and the economic plan that the Christ gave Benedict on day two of the historical conversation that was happening. And as he said, he received it with such joy and he looked at it and so simple, it just all made sense, his words. And of course it does. Christ comes along and sorts things out. That's what the whole world is waiting for. The Christ to come along and sort things out. Well, hello. So the announcement that Benedict had planned, which was a surprise to us. He didn't tell us it was happening. It was only um, the angels orchestrating us having the knowledge through Gabriel who got us the, uh, the link to show us that this was occurring, the uh, historical again, allowing the cameras. It was all Benedict on March the 3rd, just three days out of uh, into his retirement. He went in to the Shroud of Turin, took the TV cameras in there and they recorded for the first time in 30 years. So after he began communicating and uploaded to his Facebook page, uh, announcing to the world Salvatore Mundi and the release of the apostolic letter, knowing that Francis would not make the announcement, he asked him straight out in that meeting to make the announcement of the return to Christ and Francis refused, so that makes him the Antichrist, those that would deny and oppose themselves to Christ. So, yes, Benedict, um, he obviously during, and again, he didn't tell us, 
but he, he made a recording to go in front of that documentary that was to be released on, the way I understood it was to be March the 31st because when we got the news that was happening, it was now March the 30th and on the 27th of March, because this is when the notice was in the Vatican News, it was the 27th of March that um, Francis must have made his recording introducing what Holy Father Benedict had organised and stopped the announcement that Benedict had recorded to accompany that documentary. So that's why he was so furious as we, it, live communication, I'm chatting with Father Giuseppe saying we're just here to watch the live broadcast of the Shroud of Turin and Father Giuseppe goes, what? Nobody told me. So he goes and checks with the Holy Father. They're in the same room. And that's when the Holy Father says, oh, I didn't, this is to Father Giuseppe, I didn't tell you because of all the Holy Week celebrations going on. And then um, I say that Francis is introducing it. Now, this is when Father, uh, Holy Father Benedict really knew something was going wrong because Giuseppe comes back and says, hold on, he's phoning the radio station because there's a great big, what? And it was to happen now when it was, I think it was supposed to happen on Easter Sunday, not Easter Saturday. So he phones the radio station and Giuseppe comes back and he says the Holy Father is furious because the announcement has been stopped and quotation marks, they said, meaning the radio, not the radio station, the TV station, RAI TV, said Francis stopped it. And in the next thought, the paragraph reads, uh, the, the Vatican won't let me do anything anymore. And that was the night that they realised now they've become prisoners. And Father Giuseppe organised that uh, film, three and a half minutes of film, the plea to the world, Benedict's predicament, introducing Salvatore Mundi and Francis stopping the announcement going out. So... Yeah, that's what he, when he comes back. He comes back as the eighth. This time, the church is no longer the beast. Yeah. He's renamed Peter, Peter the Rock, Simon Peter upon this rock. Malachi prophecy. I will build my church and the Malachi prophecy. It actually stopped at 111 popes. Well, of course, that was Benedict. And then when the book finally came out, uh, this has been well researched. Somebody had stuck in there, 112th Pope, and this is where the Petrus Romanus comes in. But yeah, Petrus Romanus, well, Peter went to Rome. Hello? So Peter, who went to Rome, comes back as Simon Peter, the brother of Jesus, Peter the Rock. Upon this rock I will build my church, was prophetic for this day now, when the Christ will build his church upon Peter who is uh, reinstated as the Pope and the head of the church with the, the, the Christ as the wonderful counsellor, almighty God, everlasting Father. We go and read Isaiah 9, 6. That's what it's all about. So it really is all good for the good and as uh, disturbing as these last weeks have been, Prophecy cannot be broken, and that's what we are seeing fulfilled now. All right, I was also going to read the uh, Revelation, the Lunations, and how they've all lined up with Revelation 11. Let me find it on the screen here, so Joel's going to be capturing this in a split screen as he does. This wonderful synchronicity and aligning, and you can see how it has been unfolding. Now, um, <clears throat> Lunation 1115 began on the 11th of February, which was the date that Benedict announced his retirement. He would retire on the 28th, but he announced it on the 11th. That's when Lunation 1115 began, and it aligns with Revelation 1115. And he, now you can see the synchronicity of this. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. 
So the moment he announces he's pulling away, makes the way for the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of God and his Christ, Brian Leonard, go lightning, Marshall. And of course, that night, the lightning that struck the spire of St. Peter's Basilica at 5.55 p.m., never before captured, 5.55, of course, being the verse total in the King James 1611 Bible for the word Christ found in 552 verses. So 555 times actually in 522 verses. And 522 is Mother Emma. So then when we began communicating with Benedict on March the 11th, that was the beginning of lunation number 1116. And this is exactly what happened. That was the 11th of March. So Revelation 11.16, and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. So tonight is the last of Lunation 11.16. Tomorrow, April the 10th, it's just uh, two and a half hours away before we're into April the 10th, is the beginning of Lunation 11.17. And so this is what we're entering into for the next four weeks. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Lunation 11.18 aligns with May the 10th, which also happens to be an annual solar eclipse. And ring. what's that, darling? The golden ring. The golden ring, Yes. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. So not a happy for the uh, Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, and all of the rich men out there, miners and others who have been destroying the earth stealing the resources. So, 11.19 aligns with Lunation 11.19, and that begins on June the 8th, and encompasses the birthday of Jesus, as Jesus, Yahweh's birthday, on June the 17th, and will be the call going out to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And at the end of this verse is the end of the book of Revelation, it's all over. It goes back to another period of time when you move into chapter 12. So it actually ends at 11.19. Quoting, and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. And planets coming in. Yes, planets, all kinds of things going on. The, yeah, the heavy chem trailing all over Europe and America. Hiding the truth, the planet's coming in, and um, every knee shall bow. That's it in a nutshell. That's what it's all boiling. Everything else, as you know, is a distraction. There's no other truth out there. It's all a distraction. And, of course, you'll notice that things have ramped up, got worse, the distraction, that is, as we were communicating with Benedict, and he uploaded his apostolic letter on April the, uh, sorry, March the 25th. Major, major, that was a, a, a turning point in the rejection of Christ, of God. But really, it was all over, game over, over the moment that he announced his uh, retirement on 11th February. So, it's all the synchronicity, all this marvellous timing, and, um, yeah, every knee will bow. Lady